Hi, can anyone hear? I can't hear, hear or see anything. Lori, I hear feedback. Hmm. I can hear the two of you, but nothing else. Okay, what do we do? How do we reach them? How do we know we know? I'm going to see if I can send an email to the, uh, ad, uh, the administrator, the clerk. I'm going to text Albert. I think he's there. So we'll find out. It's not on mute for yeah. here, right? You can't see it behind the mute in the picture it sounds like they're talking to each other we can hear you now oh, oh, oh hey. uh, I, the pictures on there too yeah. that's great uh, i just pulled this and from right. that point right. Right. Red to, oh yeah now it's, i, get, I just have yeah, to pull it low. all i did was pull it and it changed immediately and see that there we are look so we it took. i knew what to do all along <laughs> yeah. you know that's right <laughs> All right, right then I better reread or uh, restart the, yes. the meeting again. Um, we accepted the minutes of the last meeting in April, and now we're going on to the first project that we're reviewing right now, which is the Lotus Loftus Hills and Tam at 169 Ram Island Drive. And although Ulrich, our seventh member, is not here, he wrote a very good statement of his thoughts and he can't vote on this but i accept his recommendations so i'll read them again so everybody can hear them in 129-1 of the town code identifies wetlands as an essential resource and establishes the objective to prevent the encroachment upon that resource by the spread of development to achieve the objective the town has established the distance parameters that govern the permission to build near wetlands. The code also establishes additional criteria for the discretionary permitting process for activities within the adjacent regulated area. However, all these criteria need to be weighed in the context of the overall objective, which is to prevent the encroachment by spreading development. Then he goes on to uh, state, or I should say, I'm going to state 129-5 specifies the criteria for permit issuance within the adjacent regulated area. And on A1, it says, we have to assume that the 100 foot protective border was written into the code as a distance deemed effective to avoid the risk of impairing the function and value of the wetlands and buffer. By definition, any reduction of that distance increases that potential risk. And then in A5 and 6, it asks that applicants have failed to demonstrate that there's no practical alternative to their respective proposal and that any possible alternative would have a greater negative impact compared to their proposal. Now, those are two items that this project has to adhere to. So. That's two comments that would be in our letter of denial. <clears throat> now, Mark, so at the last meeting, um, we didn't vote on because it wasn't on the public 
website. To exactly. It. But also you said this permit is being reapplied. They're going to send for new permit. That's why I got an email okay. today right. from Matt. And now, I don't know. Do, is this because of uh, they're going to establish a new mean high water mark? I don't know. He didn't mention it. Because uh, that's in the notice of disapproval here, the second. <laughs> right. Where it says um, the original. they're going to move the mean high water mark because it's going to be uh, filled in. Well, they're, they're excavating and for right, so, right. It's, yeah, but that's one. So of that them. will change. If they have a new mean high water. That's going to change where the hundred foot line is and the seventy five foot. Yes, possibly. We'll bring it inland more. Correct. That was one of my first comment, which was submit plans when new mean high water line is established. Right. Right. So that's that's what. So the have. one thing now they talk about the pool with seventy seven point six feet from the current one and the patio seventy five point two. Mm -hmm. We don't know what those numbers are going to be once it's reestablished at the new mean exactly. high water mark. Exactly. So I don't know. I mean, we could talk about some other things, but those are kind of critical factors that we need to wait until we get the new permit yeah. to find out when this new mean high water mark is established, I think. That's yeah. my opinion. Well, the thing is, a lot's 511 feet deep. So I don't think there's any reason why everything should be pushed back. That's the hundred foot mark. Right. Well, they, yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. They're they're designed it to right. room. Right. Designed right. it to fit. To fit. Yeah. I mean, you we know. could just recommend take it out hundred foot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there shouldn't be. There right. should be a parking. Right. Right. should be inside right. the seventy five foot. You know. There's right. Like, you know. It's, yeah. I think. But it's got to be redesigned to, to fit the code. You know. Yeah. That's so right. Be it's all demoed. Everything's gonna be demoed. And the code is specific in one twenty nine two and three about no driveways. He's got the driveway in there. The garbage can. Evident. Yeah. Right, you know, it's like that's beyond the seventy-five. It's it's, it's the you know, so it's, it's a violation of the code. So we're going to give that. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of room to do everything they want to do. I think so. Uh, and then I said uh, they should provide the test well in the location of the new structure. They have it in a location that's not in the new structure being done. Just so we have it, they have plenty of elevation. I don't think it's going to be a problem. But if they're going to right. do a test. They should do that. Oh, the test hole, you mean? Yeah. yeah. And then I had some other comments. And uh, first of all, there's two C1 documents. There's one that's the proposed site, and the other one is the proposed sanity. So maybe we should have done one to C2. Go in the back on the sanity. Oh, it's all on the back. Oh, yeah. Next page. Oh, yeah. There's two C1s. Right. Um, and they're different. They're not the same. Yeah. They're different plans. Right. But they just. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as I went through the plans, I this couple of here. Uh, what did I had on this drawing? Oh, I know what it is. There's a conflict with the landscaping. Let me just go through one by one on these. So let's know what sheet you're on. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know. When I, go. I, want, I didn't they, look at the building. You want to look on him and I give you. Yeah, give it. They can see it. Now, on drawing A152. It's not a lot of people. Oh, yeah. It says. A152. It's an accessory apartment. It's not a guest house. Uh, in fact, it's almost a dwelling to my. We only have two definitions in the code. That's of a dwelling and a basement. Accessory apartment. Accessory apartment. That's right. It. So the terminology should be corrected with trying to get here. Uh, and none of these drawings from way back has dated. None of them are dated. So if there's going to be a change to the documents, it should have the first date on and then have the revised date of all the documents. A couple of other little. Once we get through that, it's a beautiful set of drawings. Thank God it's dead. In fact, there's ink on great paper. Uh, well, I'll just have some of those. 
And let's uh, see what that little bottle has on there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, it states on L401 that existing tree to remain pending on site assessment. Uh, since this is quite old, I think we should have that assessed before it's submitted again, whether that tree will be removed or whatever. There's no trees on the, on the water side? No, this is back in this area. Conservation. By the tennis conservation, yeah. So. The plan should be a little bit more clarified. I mean, he has two things here. Here it's on L402. Yeah, the existing tree to remain pending landscape architect and owner assessment. That, you know, we don't want to get that in the field. We want to do that beforehand. We'll probably check on the quality of the tree, you know. Oh, yeah. Pay the pen. There's a few nice trees. trees on that property. Yeah, there are some white oaks and some hickories that yeah. are yeah. It might be yeah. saving it, but it, it should be assessed when we submit it. Because they're building pretty much inside the setbacks everywhere. There's no real, you know, no. free zone there too much along that edge. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody's doing that, making it like Queens, you know. <laughs> you go 20. <laughs> Uh, part of what trees are. Yes, it is. Uh, beautiful set of drawings, but yeah. very complete. Very... Oh, yeah. That is it. Once we get that high water mark again. Oh, back on. Uh... Oh, yeah. well, the whole thing is the garbage can. 75 feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. On C1. Uh, the last C1, right? <laughs> well, not my C1. <laughs> the C1 title proposed site is really by Costello, who's going to establish this bulkhead. Okay, right. And I have a question for Costello. He's putting in CCA piling. And I know that that's in that. And since 2000. Great. For home use. Yes. Now, maybe in the wetlands, but it's, it's going to leach arsenic, which is part of that's the A part, and uh, chromating copper into the environment, both into the water and back in. So I would just like um, Costello to look at that and see if we could use the, the newer items, which are ACQ, uh, actual. <laughs> Alkaline copper quaternary. Um, I think that stuff eats the nails up. It's so bad. Yeah. Or <laughs> the other item is FRP, which is fiber reinforced polymers. Yeah. Which is they they're starting to use around since. I know those are probably double the price. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're probably <laughs> correct. You're probably correct. Like that. But that's yeah. what I would like to know if, if that's the reason. We can weigh yeah. our opinion on that. Mm -hmm. so, so that's that one. So uh, mm -hmm. let's see. <clears throat> oh, one thing he has is aluminum cap, grading cap. I thought salt water attacks aluminum quite. Yeah, they do that so that when the waves come over, it goes down through. Yeah, because the cap and the, but, you know, because it's corrugated. But that's an. Aluminum deteriorate, oxidize with the salt water. Not as quick as other things. Not fiberglass is very sturdy. I probably wouldn't take the take the beat in there. That is so one of the roughest spots on Shoal yeah. Island. Yeah, it's going to get yeah. absolutely yeah. annihilated by the. Sounds. Well, that was my question. Whether mm. they could use something. Look at the, the steel wall they did on the causeway. It's all. Mm-hmm. That old steel is it's almost there. Yeah, well, the steel is not going to, but the, like, like the starting to use, you know, fiberglass and stuff. In fact, when I was doing electrical engineering, we tried to get rid of PVC piping because of that. It's a carcinogen, PVC. And the harm is not only to the environment, but to the workers who work on it. They get it in their hands, and it's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing to put on. But... Okay. The EPA did something on it, and that's it. Let's see what happens. So I just asked that question of the contract, and come back and explain with that. 
Okay. So that I think is it, unless anybody else has some other items on. We're going to have to review this whole thing. We're going to review it again, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. Not, well, we're going to yes. let's vote on it now on the items we just discussed. And I, I, I suggest uh, all those to discuss with you. 25 the code sections and being moving about out of Just the move the whole thing on 100 foot. Like the whole, the whole thing 100 foot, right? right. right. Okay. And that's, that's the big one. That's the main one. Right. To really be designed that way to start with. I mean, it, you know, when you're Do you want everything out of 100 foot? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That's the intent yeah. of the code. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we should say the 100 foot with the new mean high water. When that's a hundred foot way back from the new mean high water line was established for the bulkhead. All right. so, okay, so what do we say? We deny this application. I I would suggest we do. Yeah, yeah, because it's going to be needs a lot of work. Reapply, it does. To reapply again anyway, so it's right. irrelevant. What we're right. doing now, we can discuss it. You say, but right. well, we have to. We have to vote. We haven't been told not to. Okay. <laughs> okay. Matt, Matt yes. said they're going to do it, but nobody from the, the town, town said, said that. that. Okay, I understand. Yeah. That's the engineer of the project said. All right. So, I, I, so there's some reason why they're re going to re reapply, which you don't know the is, reason. Okay. He said because it might change uh, the work in the regulated area, which would be part of it, but we don't know right. why all right. at all. It's just an email to me this okay. afternoon. They're right. inside the 75. Yeah. Area. I mean, it's but, not like it's well, just between 175. Yeah, exactly. No, the the driveway, driveway is designated the driveway. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know, there's garbage yeah, cans garbage out there cans, and right. parking. And so right. I, I uh, say uh, anybody want to make a motion that we do those items as a denial of this application? I so move yeah. that we deny this application. Okay, we'll take a vote on it. All right. Okay. Six zero. Yes. All right, that's one. Okay. Now, Wait, could you uh, relay the message of uh, one, one item, which is the key item about keeping everything out of the, just they have. They have the room. They have plenty of room. Plenty right. of room. Right. Can you just give them a heads up that the committee is not interested in entertaining anything within the 100 feet? Right. So that, then they can make any other adjustments they want. So I don't that nothing is going inside that foot. That's right. All right. Thanks for that one. I'll save this for when the new one comes. Yeah, right. To compare? Well, I still have some other contracts. Oh, one of the things is uh, uh, on the, the uh, vegetation plant, which is very thorough, is they say sod. Uh, generally, we don't allow sod. I guess if it's a fescue. But most of the stuff they're putting down now, especially in the saltwater areas, is fescue sod. But they didn't type, so yeah. yeah. It would get just salt. And we'll get it. We'll get a, a, a more thorough review when it comes back. Yep. On the irrigation plan because it's quite thorough. They've really done a tremendous job. But. All righty. All right. Now the next one. Thanks. All right. Uh, next one is uh, and go here. seven to put in. Do you guys? Great, Carol. Yeah. Do you have anything? No, no, we do. Not with us. We had it. We <laughs> went. <laughs> we don't have it with us. Yeah. No, Thank you. Like Sorry. Yes. I don't know. All right. I don't know. Somebody else want to go first before I start? Start with what you just said. <laughs> it's uh, just it's a property to me is like at sea level, so it's just hard to. There it's, no, it all looks like wetland area to me. Seven right. feet. They want to go six feet. Seven yeah. Feet. Okay. Yeah. If you look at 133-17G, since this is in the, uh, the uh, shoreline, shoreline uh, uh, overlay district, overlay uh, district, yeah. Uh, 
it says no accessory apartment may be constructed in the near shore and mm -hmm. peninsula overlay district. Mm -hmm. And this property district. Sorry. So that's one thing that we should weigh on. Uh, is the heights different from the rest of the town as far as that stuff goes or not? It followed the town code. Mm -hmm. A uh, couple of other things that one stack, it's, it's you know, it's, there's all different names for this structure again. Starts out as accessory sleeping, accessory quarters here. Right. And then it, it starts out when you look at the thing, it's called a cottage. Uh, and the cottage by, you know, we don't have that in town the town code. Uh, the only thing we have is a dwelling and accessory of apartment. Yeah, well, I don't accessory apartment. Yeah, that's all. But according to Webster, a cottage is about a hundred, twelve hundred square feet maximum. So this should be called either a dwelling or an accessory apartment course, uh, building. Um, let's see what else we had. First of all, there's an awful lot of irrigation here that looks like it's been worked on, and I don't think it's got a permit for it. So if it does, they should submit the permit for this property, for the irrigation system. Okay. Let's see what else we have. On it. One of the hopes of the thing is Okay, I said to provide a test well in the area of construction. If they insist, we should put it where we're going to construct. But I don't think we should get into the other methods of construction since it's basically not allowed in the New Shore Overlay Peninsula District. Correct. So I think we should just do that. The other items I have, we can take care of when they come back, which is uh, like I mentioned, the irrigation plan, uh, pool cover. Uh, and there's other ways to construct this so it's out of the 100 foot, but, you know, cantilever construction. Is he, uh, there's no piling details, which he has shown. So I, I think we should just keep it all that construction out of the overlay protection area. All right. So, do we know is this in the federal flood zone? Well, it's, it's it's listed here, but I'm not yeah. sure if it's correct. Right. That's that was my question. Yeah. Looks like it would be. I mean, it well, it, it is in the flood. It, yeah. it is. I mean, the the, the, so, the national yeah. flood zone. Right. Yeah. Is ten feet up generally, but right. Yeah, you do have a bulk head. So they're less than ten feet. Yes. Right. right. So I mean, do we want to? Well, get... we know that this property has been flooded over here. Right. Come around. It's... I think during Sandy, the whole pool was full of salt water. It came in over. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a that storm. We can't really say that. You know, it's. it's... I know. I'm just saying that the water will come. Oh yeah. High. Oh sure. Yeah. It comes it's to... rising. It's going to keep going up. So. Yes. Yeah. As the island shrinks and as it sinks and the uh, water levels rise, so was this actually denied by the building department or not? No, no, so not yet. No, they didn't go to uh, no, they they have a letter of denial, but not on the items that we're going through. So, uh, so I think that we should deny this wetlands application based on the items we just said, which is you know, the uh. Overlay Peninsula does not allow anything. Oh, 133 dash, what did I have here? Uh, 133 12. Matt's not on about this one? He's, nah, I don't know. Matt's on. No, no. He's not. Because he did this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Matt did both of them. Right, right. Yeah. Matt Maybe does one. I know, but if you want to talk about this one, that's all. Okay. <laughs> No, hey, he, 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 I think he knows, well, he knows now. Anyway, okay, so we have to take a, a motion to uh, vote on this uh, based on it's not allowed in the uh, near shore overlay district. district. And 
these small little other items, which is the irrigation system, has to get a permit for it, and that the test will be done where the work is going to be constructed. So those three are the main items that I have. Yeah, I would think the building department would have denied it on that basis if that was the case. You know what I mean? I know what your code says, but I mean, it, that would have, I would have thought that would have been a, a flag to them, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, that's... Well, that's why we have committees looking at these things. Not everybody makes, you know, not everybody touches everything. Some errors. Uh, we need to figure out where it's going to be. Does it matter? Because so, it does it matter? Because it's all that we know. Uh, yeah, the hot water. Sure, yeah, the water. water. Does, does, that, does that make a difference? It shouldn't. And and it's it's heights water, but the irrigation is still it's our aquifer. Right. No, but I'm saying it's part of the septic department. You know. The, it's terrible. Yeah, it's it's right. It's, 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 it's crazy. Well, as far as I know, I mean, they follow the same code as us. So. so we don't know the fact if it is in the federal flood zone, right? I don't know that. Yeah. I mean, that was something I think we should find out. Or the town board should, should, should I mean, if it's pretty low, I assume it is, but I don't want to make an assumption it's not true. The department has that overlay. You walk in, they can punch it right up and uh, okay. property at high low. Right. I mean, that would be the first thing we should the right. town board or town should look at and find out if that's true. And if it is, yeah. what about the pool being the one core property, you know, going out to Shell Beach? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dark Sandy, it flooded. That whole area down there flooded. Uh, all the homes near Shell Beach flooded with about a foot to two feet of water. You couldn't go down Oak Tree Lane, right? Not right from right. the start, right? I'm mean, building a house there, right. they're elevating the house, right. but yeah, I was in that basement, and that basement was dry in that house that they tore down. Yeah, well, what she about invited me in the basement? I said, Sure, I'll go in and take a look, and she said, It's dry. Whatever they did, I mean, they might have built it like a ship or something. I don't know. I mean, they do a lot of preliminary work there. I know that. What do you got, Paulette? I was going to say, what about the pool being just so close to the house? I mean, I said, isn't there, I think there'd be some rule about that. No. No? No. Not frankly, I didn't look it up, but it, that's awfully close. As long as you can't walk out, uh, step into the pool at the door. Hey, we need to change that because that looks crazy to me, but you know. So, even with the pool, there's no dewatering, right? I mean, isn't the ground water? Well, any construction right. has to be no dewatering. dewatering. Right. But that's the new, that's a recommendation, but that's not in the code, or is it in the code? Um, I'd have to check that it's yeah, established. It's established, established right, that we right. don't do it. Do we do it? Right. No dewatering, de right? No dewatering for any construction, right. especially right. if it's close to the shore. Yeah. I mean, we have dewatered the historical center. Was dewatered, right. You know, but that was some construction with the sheathing walls in there. You know, it was because uh, I was a New York City architect doing it. And he has done a lot of that work in New York City. Right. And page of Pedersen. Page two of the permit application it says groundwater depth five feet. Right. So <laughs> what was the depth of the pool? I don't yeah. Pool? I, the pool is yeah. not part of the, yeah. even the submittal, so I didn't even go into the depth of the pool. <laughs> right. It's, so it's I mean, existing. Good. But right. So it was there. Whatever happened before it was there. So Lori has her hand up. Oh, okay. Lori? You have a question or a no. statement to make? Um, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we yes. can. Okay. Uh, it is in a FEMA flood zone. It's an AEE. AEE. -E. Okay. Yeah, although it's not listed correctly on the uh, drawings. Um, um, but it, it floods. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's a good idea the town to prove something that's in a flood zone. Correct. New structure. But existing structures are certainly a few around, that's for sure on the island. Yeah, there's quite a few, right. right? Quite a few structures around there. Down by me, West End, right? Uh, yeah. Long yeah. Long floods double propagating. So, if there's no reason to build something new in a flood zone, not perhaps no, no no at all. And I don't know what they're going to do down on the shore by me in Montclair Colony because every storm 
no matter what septic we put in, it's going to flow right out to the bay. It's happening. Okay, so should we vote? So let's take a vote on those items that we deny so this wetlands permit. Because it's in the North Shore Overlay District, right? Yeah. Okay. That's, That's, cool. That's, That's number the one. one. That's the main one. The main one. The other items, you know. Should that be a question or should that just be a, you know? No, that's a statement of the code. Okay. All right. The code. It's 133-12. Yes. Yes. And it's a, specifically, I think it's F23. All right. All right. Uh, so based on that, we want to deny the, uh, do we make a motion? So we make a motion to deny it. Honey? I'll make another motion to deny this one as well. Good, Rox. Yes. You're on a roll. Yeah. Take a roll tonight. Take a, take a vote. Anybody else? No. no. I don't think so. No. Okay. All right. We take a vote. Deny the application. Six zero. Okay. Okay. All right. That was the oh, one part of our system. That was most. most. So that, I mean, have to then do the other parts of our meeting. Hmm. Mark, the next one is yours, right? Yes, just leave I'll give later. Thank. Oh, okay, I was going to shoot them. Oh, we'll 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 mess with our microphones here. No. <laughs> <laughs> the next item is the invasive plant and recommended. <laughs> Dan has shown us uh, some literature on it, which we're going to have to format so that. It fits into our code item and it's not plagiarism or something like that, which yeah. I don't think it's a problem, but we, we're going to work on that and uh, work with a website. Maybe Kevin or somebody can help we, us. We need bit. somebody that does web design to kind of redo this listing this in an hour old format, you kind of tweak it a little bit. But I do like the way that it's set up with the different, you know. You know, things to watch out for, and then the actual outlawed invasives, you know. Right. So you're just thinking about using these two pages. The well, thing. yeah, what I would like to, what, what I would like to do, if we can get someone to do all this, is have it so you can use like one, whatever plant you were looking at, mm -hmm. and it has a summer, summer and a winter photo, photo. photo. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, a little bit about the plant, maybe, is it stolen at first, like bamboo, is it that, that kind of invasive plant, or is it like, you know, barberry or something like that, you know, like how it spreads its seeds, you know, right. just a very simple mm -hmm. little blur, but I think that's the best way to go about it. Uh -huh. um, and it just gives people enough information to make the right decisions. Instead of just having like our old list, it's just a list of, right. you know, it has no pictures, it has no information. Right. Um, right. It just has a name, which, yes, people can Google that, but make, make it, it simple for sure. people so they make the right decision without just saying, oh, this is too much work. Okay, so, Dan, can you sort of follow up with Kevin? Or yeah, I'll find out who can do that, but if they can do it, or yeah, if you can't do that, I can I can reach out to him tomorrow. Okay, appreciate that. Hey, Dan, was mugwort a, a species from around here, or is that invasive? No, that's invasive. No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's stuff's terrible. terrible. That's the worst. You can't get rid of them. What the heck is that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> You can dig it out, that comes right back. Yeah. That's like bamboo too, that's like stolen off, goes all the way under the ground, everywhere. Yeah, it kills everything that goes near it. Yeah. Hmm. Is that on here? I'm looking for it. Let's see it. I don't think it's on there exactly like that. It's, it's called Should something be. else. I don't know its Latin name. Yeah, I mean, yes, just it has Latin and then the actual name, but it's right. kind of like. Uh, Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't see what I did. It's tough because I printed it out double sided. I ran out of ink. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's somewhere, somewhere. I'm sure it's mugwort right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we just hide number one. So right there. Fourth one down. <laughs> Which one? Uh, table one. Do not. Oh, yeah. Oh. There's, a, there's a couple of different pages. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
older stuff. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. It's just the format. It's the format. Right, not right, like right. the right way right here. But I think right. if we yeah. make it simple, we can make this very, right, right, very right. nice for our use. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the way they have it laid out on their website is very nice. Right. Just scroll down. They have it all there. Yeah. It's all yeah. color. Uh, that's good. Yeah, we don't want to say. Right. Um, well, could we just put a link on our website? To, to well, this? we should, but I think it'd be like nice it says, to... do not sell lists and stuff like that. It has nothing to do with that. If you look right. on the, yeah, this is more for like horticulture, right. right. fine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, you don't. So, right. okay. so items like that, we have to clarify. Oh. Okay. So. Um, can I ask, what is the cardamom impatience, if I'm saying it correctly? Is, is, that, is that the tr traditional impatience that we all used to use until they remember that we had a problem with them, that they were no longer producing? Because I used to use, use impatience all the time. Then they got a disease. Oh, they got the disease. Yeah, I am not familiar exactly no. with that, mm -hmm. but okay. I think they sell them again now. now. Do they? Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I guess they are right. Course. You've seen them. I've seen yeah. them. I don't want to buy the wrong thing. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> which, which is kind of um, right. But I think I can. Hopefully, it's okay. And they're okay. Right. So we can <clears> that. And there's a whole bunch of other lists that I have here for the native plants on Long Island. That's the thing. You could go in with all the natives and then the non native, but it's like, let's stick to one. Invasive. Yeah, let's try to get the invasives down in a good format first. Right. And then we can kind of add on to that right. with, a, with another list. Okay. Dan, I was wondering are there some uh, classic offenders uh, you, you likely know? In other words, as you look around Shelter Island, are there invasives that are used very frequently here that we ought to? Really yeah, that, that that's something that I think we would also highlight in there. Yes. You know. Yeah, and put a star or something. Because I was thinking. Yeah, the big, yeah, the big ones that you want to look out for, yeah. and that's something that like on a link on a website is very simple. You can just put that like our most popular right. invasives. Mm -hmm. we yes. Yeah. Well, that could be and what they look like because yeah. you know every season they look different right you might not notice right yeah you know especially the mugwort's almost gone and then you just see a little it. strand on the ground right. and in the spring it's right. yeah. it's crazy again so right um, all that stuff's the, different the nurseries pretty much don't sell any of these invasives are they is that a yeah but they can be in plants when you purchase them especially right. if they're from north carolina or virginia yeah. right. you know the right. trees come in oh. and you see the base of the tree grow up like, or it's in the has all, yeah or, or in the mulch huh. um that these things are very they happens all the time how do you, you see that at least you can pull it out and get rid of it before right. it spreads right right, right. Yeah, if you know if you know what it is. That's what I mean. If you have a yeah. picture, you know and yeah. you're familiar with it. So and the garlic mustard is everywhere right now. Yeah, it's blowing like crazy. So in your plantings, you ever plant beach plum with people? Mm -hmm. And right now it's like gorgeous. You yeah, know, it's like it's a great pollinator for the bees and stuff yep. this time of year. Yeah. It's got beautiful white flowers. The yeah, whole stem's covered, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could encourage. There's a lot of shell beach. Mm -hmm. But that's shell something beach. we can yeah. encourage people to do. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. like, what about cherry trees? Um, cherries, not really the best flowering trees. Okay. Plums trees. No. I know they, they have a terrible debris problem because. Yeah, and you have to spray them, mm -hmm. you know, because they get well, both fun. fun they're not native, but yeah. No. 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 So that's the issue. But, you know, to the beach plum is a great thing to plant. And right. Right. Then you can yeah, they're native. A nice jam from a tip. If you yeah, get enough, yeah. Well, if people don't know, obviously, as we know, that's the whole point of this. They come and they plant things and they really they don't know. Yeah. It's right. not really their fault in a way. I mean, they just. You need two plants to plant in order to yeah. get them. Right. That's, well, else. that's yeah. why we have that. This is our special that's place. Yeah. Um, the nematode yeah. still yeah. in the tree trees. Yeah, it's bad. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Right. They don't want to do that. <laughs> Treating all mine right now. Stops from selling. Right. Our sales hedge is that. I know, I don't know how that's going to fare through that. Yeah. All right, what's next? Okay. Okay. Yeah, just any, any word on the, uh, the I, you know, I went, I went on the expressway the other day and I was going westbound and I noticed the destruction on the pine barrens. Hmm. Looks like that, the beetles. Oh, those, taken, that's the beetles. They, they have taken a real yeah, toll yeah. on yep. the pine trees. Yep. Is there any effort to stop it? at the pine barrens or do you know any effort to do? I mean all they're doing is really cutting down the trees and trying to get rid of the debris so they stop the spread but it's not going to happen it's probably going to have to catch on fire for everything to right, right. So. 
Nature's way. Yeah, nature's way, cleansing that out. Yeah, and that's what you can see. Just imagine what you can't see. Exactly. You know, if you flew over that, I bet it's a whole other situation. Yeah. I know in New Jersey years ago, when it was coming up through New Jersey, they cut uh, like a right. quarter mile yes. type of thing. Like a fire break? Uh, like a fire break. You know, exactly. A border there. But for everything, they, they, it just supersedes that. You know, you'd, have to, you'd have to cut you know, much greater distance. I don't know what the appropriate distance would be, but you know, disease seems to spread to either the birds, wind, and you know, a variety of different ways that it spreads. But there's no stopping it when it's, when it gets going on. It's like, no, unfortunately. Mm. Any word on the uh, on the trees that you were working on last year? The big old uh, beeches. Beeches. Yeah, that the treatment for that should be done now. Um, they do have a cure. It's called broad form. Um, it's it's a fungicide. And it's I mean it's not good stuff, but at least it is curing the trees. Um, broad form. Yep. So it just kills the nematodes. Or? Yep. And what do you do? Just like spray it once? <laughs> so you have to do it every year, every spring? Uh, twice a year. Um, spring, and then I think they do another treatment. It's not just one treatment, every, every annually, right? Yeah. Okay. So spring So far, this, I mean, they just found this oh, out, okay. like in the fall. So this is Got a brand new thing. Year, the first they year know it kills the nematode. Got they it. do not know, you know, the next year side effects or, yeah. What it. It. Okay. But, um, you know, it's very hard to get. Is it expensive? Yeah, uh, very, very expensive. There's only one company that makes it. And, and right now, it. Bartlett holds all of it. Wow. <laughs> they yeah. bought every yeah. ounce of it. Wow. Wow. So um, mm -hmm. I know they're obviously working to get more out, but mm -hmm. if you do have a beech tree on your property, you can also treat it with a high phosphorus. Um, they sell those at like the hardware store. You can buy like phosphate, favorite, just yeah. phosphorus, yeah. And there's actually like a little formula online that you can look up that's right on YouTube or whatever. And they can, they can tell you exactly, you know, per caliber, what size, you know, how much to put on there. But I mean, anything you could do in that direction is helping. So you put it in the round of tree in the soil? Yep, yep. soil tree, just a soil yeah. drench. Yep. Uh, have you ever, yeah, and that's, that's not poisonous, you know, that's just phosphorus, so. Right. Uh, do these things have like a cycle? Nematodes? They, they don't really know that around. much about them yet. But it's going to affect right? the old trees. Yeah, they're a worm, but it's going to affect the old trees more. Right. Yeah, yeah, the ones over at Sylvester Mata, the ones over in, uh, you know, uh, where I play tennis over in the, near the golf course, uh, Garden Bay. Yep. They, they've taken it. They see some damage there. Yeah, I can already see some weakness in a, a few yeah. of those trees. So, do you know anything we can do to help? Those trees are well over 100 years old. So oh, they're a couple hundred years old. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Does Diet Tomatoes Earth work with them? Do you know? Because that works for some insects. Right? Yeah, I don't know yet, but I've been, I've been doing the high phosphorus and all my trees are very healthy okay. right now. So they, they're all leafed out very nicely um, and I don't see any new damage right now in the leaves. So good. that's a positive. So nice. Nice. Twice good. a year, the phosphorus? Yeah, twice a year for that too. But the broad form really, that's the what cures it, but so it no, kills that's everything enough. Yeah, it kills everything. So that's something we want to avoid really. Yeah. How do you spell that, Dan? Phosphates. So we it's, can get it into just phosphorus, phosphorus like that's fertilizer. Like, like, like the fertilizer? What we're trying What's to do out of, out of uh, fresh pond? Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's that's the Well, that way we great. take that stuff, use that the on the beach pond trees. And put it around. <laughs> yeah. Do something good for the island. Yeah, yeah, the beach trees are too easy. <laughs> P.O. wouldn't like it on the bottom, but you know. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. very interesting. So, like, it's phosphate. Okay, good. It's good. Now, our article for Roxanne to publish. Now, we have to wait for state <laughs> approves the change to the code that we that the town board no longer be watching on the wet, uh, wetlands. Uh, okay. Transfer to the planning board. So, so, do we know when we will know that? No, the timeline? I don't think no. so. Okay. That's on the, uh, the, the state approval for the change of the code for the wetlands going to the planning board. Yeah. That's not approved yet, from what I understand. I, was, just think. Yeah, I think it was voted on last Tuesday at that meeting and I was away, but uh, I was gonna comment on that in my little section. 
Oh, let's do it now. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. All right. So uh, before I left, anticipating that this might happen when I was gone, it's the first one in eight years that I've actually missed a, that meeting, the uh, Little Friday meeting. Um, I asked my colleagues on the town board to uh, consider um, the following. Um, I said, first and foremost, a special thank you to Christine for all the efforts that she had in laying out these comments and concerns. And she publicly went, she went down and, and she answered each and every one of those concerns. Whether it was to the degree of satisfaction of the people that wrote them, I'm not sure about that. Uh, the three new codes uh, strengthened the law. The proposed request to flag a wetlands boundaries by uh, credentialed environmentalists. The final review of the site of the environmental professionals. And number three, the pro prohibit clearing of wetlands outside of the 129-3B, whereas before you could get a permit. One of the things that I wanted to do is regardless of, we get enough feedback from a variety of people on the island about relinquishing this authority of the town board who are elected officials to the planning board who are not elected officials. And, and also to a certain degree to the CAC. Um, my feeling on it was a big jump. There were a lot of concerns. Uh, I, I know Christina sat down with, um, with Meg and, and with BJ and went through all of these concerns. It wasn't quite sold on that we had answered and addressed each and every one of them to my degree of satisfaction, but was coming up. My main thing was it was only April. Uh, why couldn't we approve this on a six month trial basis only? So in other words, my recommendation to the, my colleagues was, if you decide to pass this as effective beginning of May, May, June, July, August, September, October. At the end of October, before the election, you'd be able to sit down, get a bunch of people together, find out in fact, whether A, it is 100% working well, and is doing what we thought it would do. B, it's not working at all, and you need to revert back to the old system. Or three, to a certain degree, it's working, but it needs to be tweaked. How does it need to be tweaked? So it's kind of like an after action report where you try something out for six months. It's a trial period. You find out what's working, what's not working. I don't think you have to wait a year. I don't think you have to wait two years. I think you'll know within six months uh, to what degree of satisfaction the planning board, and, and obviously I'm not a liaison to the planning board, it never have been in my eight years, but I need to be convinced that, um, in fact, what it was intended to is, in fact, strengthening, not weakening, uh, the wetlands. Obviously, wetlands are becoming more and more important because of climate change. You know, as climate change progresses, um, Towns have to do, uh, municipalities have to take, be very active in terms of how you protect those wetlands. <clears throat> wetlands have multiple functions. Uh, I mean, one is, you know, the habitat stuff, wildlife stuff, um, obviously safeguarding flooding and, and things of that nature, but they're more important than ever before. So that was my request. So when I got back, I, I went to the uh, cleanup around town I asked one member who was present there what happened did they take my consideration and discuss it and I, I was told that um, it was discussed but it was they felt they didn't want it the regulation they didn't want it in the um, what am I thinking of the word uh, the uh, of the regulation the uh, recommendation the code no, change or no the uh, Oh, what we read there, the, the, uh, oh, I can't think of minutes. The minutes? No, not the, no, <laughs> not, no, no. no, not the proposal. The formal, uh, resolution. The hearing. What is it, Stella? Resolution. 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 Thank you very much. Resolution. The word I was for. <laughs> resolution. So if you weren't going to write it in the resolution, which I would prefer to have it in writing, um, what I plan on doing tomorrow is discussing this privately with them, saying that you didn't put it in the resolution, but I want a firm commitment that we're going to, in fact, do this. And I, 
Uh, now, whether I can get that or I can't, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I have the old man on the thing, so I'm going to after eight years, I should be able to cram a certain amount of uh, attention here. And I just felt like, um, you know, and I know the vote was 3 1, and, and I was there for the vote. Um, I would have either abstained or would have voted against it unless this was, if this provision was in there, uh, in the resolution, I would have voted for it. Uh, I, I think there was enough merit moving forward that I wanted to try something different. And it got great support from a lot of people, but it got a lot of question marks from a lot of other people that maybe didn't fully understand. But say after six months, you can pretty much tell that the thing is doing what you want it to do or what's going off track. Obviously, you'll have a new town board. Either 40 to 60% of the town board will change over in January of 2024. And they can go back and revisit this. But I would like to think that, you know, the current town board, that we're not looking to uh, jam anything down people's throats. And when you get enough feedback, from people that really care about wetlands applications, it is it would behoove you. It just makes good common political sense of no other reason to sit down and say, let's just give it a try and, and, and reevaluate it afterwards. So that was what I was trying to get across. So hopefully tomorrow I am gonna put my foot down and try to uh, make that happen. You gotta do that. I probably should have told you <laughs> <laughs> at the work session tomorrow. Well, yeah, tomorrow, I'll do it privately. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Not okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for sharing, Jim. Okay. But I felt it was important for you to understand that since this committee is one of two committees that has this direct responsibility, um, I think the single most important thing that you do is the visits to the property. I mean, I, I think you know, I think you have to have well qualified people. You have got people that understand the town code that now fully, I, I think we got so far the pendulum swings back and forth in this country on a variety of issues. And I think our wetlands, we swung, when the code was written, it was tight. And then eventually it swung way over to the other side where, you know what, there was so many freaking exceptions. And I was part of it, you know, I was part of that. I mean, I'll tell you, I, you know, I, you try, well, it's just this, so it's just that. and. It, and after a while, it gets more and more and more where there is no regard for the 75-foot buffer and then little regard for the 100-foot buffer. Um, so, you know, it's time to bring it back. It's time to bring it back the other way and get a hold of this thing before it, it, it hurts you. you know? and, and you can't redo, you know, you cannot do what has been done, which is, you know, I don't want to go off track, but the moratorium is part of that quest to get back to the center where we're not sitting down and approving 12, 14, 16,000 square foot homes routinely, you know, because if you agree to the following dozen things, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe we need to get away from that mindset as well. So I, you know, I think that's the direction that Angela swings right now it's coming back left. We need to get it back to, to something reasonable that people uh, can accept. That's sorry for taking so much time, but that's what I do. Okay, okay then. Thank you, Jim. Uh, the next thing we have is the article that Roxanne was doing, and that's all based on what Jim just said. Yeah. Yes, I think it will. There's the one that I had written previously, definitely. And I was talking to Suzanne, and she did say that on the website uh, where we have conservation advisory that you can post additional documents mm -hmm. so if we want to at least that's one place that we could get that out and we might as well wait another week or two if we need to in order to get yes. that one component clarified but it seems as though that's pretty easy and according to suzanne coco and christina are both authorized to post and kevin and kevin, and kevin of course right <laughs> kevin can post anything he wants right so yeah so that was, you know, so I think that might wrap that up um, and whether or not we want to put anything in the paper is maybe another matter, uh, but- Was so there someone in the town, excuse me, sorry. Yes, no, no please that Approves things before it goes on the website, the town website? Uh, that's really Christina's job. Okay. Okay, Christina can do that, yeah. So she's got to look over and make sure it's 
Yeah, it's sure. guidelines that have to be approved by. Yeah. Okay. okay, fine. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then you're welcome. And then last time, uh, last meeting, Mark um, had the fabulous idea that we should try to do some community education <laughs> around this whole topic of pesticides, thinking that it was timely. So he and I met, we talked a little bit about format. Um, and so here is a, a draft um, of at least a hopefully persuasive argument uh, as to why, and when you know Dan was talking about with invasives, communicating why this stuff matters is really important to compliance. So take a look at what you have here. Um, see if you think it's overkill in terms of um, an attempt to persuade, but what we essentially have is a you know, statement of the problem, um, where we've come, I think, you know, Jim was just giving us a little bit of history about the pendulum swinging, but you, know, you can see that environmentally, uh, much of what we knew um, 50 years ago, we have not paid a great deal of attention to. And uh, then just a little bit of encapsulation of the laws, you know, Suffolk County, New York, and uh, Shelter Island specifically, and then some things, some recommendations for what might be helpful for local residents to do or entertain or try to support. So my recommendation would be if you can take a look at this, see what you think, read it. Uh, it looks good. I, I, uh, I just have one. Okay. Do you want me to share this with Christina, Christina right away or no? That's fine with me. I think we're ready. Back to I mean, I think to wait too long and then people are spraying with pesticides up here. Right. If we don't have any objection to it, why not at least put it on the website for now? Yeah, I, I, I and think then, the committees, there are, there are, you know, the green yeah. options, your integrity, right. Right. Yeah. CAC, education and outreach. Right. They're going hand in hand. So I take everything you do in terms of educating, and outreach is very important. I noticed for kind of guest away partnership, one of the biggest things now that we have a whole separate department for now, Education and outreach. Mm -hmm. You can't get this all done without it. Really can't. You know, so you really right. do have to educate the public. I'm not going to say everybody's going to read it, okay. but the, you know what? You know where you bring this to? You bring this to homeowners association. So right, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. when I was president of the Beach for 12 years, yeah. this is a topic that you put on the. You try to get it on there mm -hmm. through the Shelter Island Association because they sit down with their neighborhood associations and try to get these kind of topics. These are great topics yes. for a neighborhood association meeting. They really are. Every one of those has 50, 60 people present for them. Mm -hmm. You know, you're reaching five, six, seven hundred people yes. throughout the course of the year just at the neighborhood association meetings. So I think it's really, really important. And usually every association has somebody on their board that loves this kind of stuff. Me too. That mm -hmm. specialize in getting the message out. I think it's a great. So, and by the way, they, they, you could, you yourself could make an appointment to get to the, you know, somebody from the committee, to the showground association meeting where they do come, uh, these different neighborhood associations, and try to, pick, put, you know, use your education outreach right, right. through them. It's great. Yes. And we could do the same with invasive plants, right? Yeah. Yep. You'd be willing to yep. hit a couple of them? Yep. Okay. And both of these items we should put into the uh, green expo. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just sheets. Right. 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 Well, yeah. So one of the things we talked about is yes. this on the website. Right. Right. Then take, after you guys look at this, take certain sections of this and like make it a lot smaller, like with bolted items, and that's what yes. we put in the paper. In the paper. Uh, right. Right. Too long right. for the paper. Right. Right. So that would be a, a second aspect of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Just so you know. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I just have one comment. <laughs> What's helpful, number three, cut the grass to three inches to discourage weeds and drought resistance. The only problem with that is it attracts ticks. So you're fighting pesticides with, right. with the drought and stuff. So it's just something we might clarify. Everybody may not do it, but that is the recommendation. Yeah. Yes, I, mean, I know. Yeah, you, can yeah, yeah. you can go two and a half inches is better than 
For sure. I mean, right now you can cut your lawn three times a week and it's going to be growing. Yeah. It's long. It doesn't matter. But, you know, in another couple of weeks, you won't have to cut it as much. Yeah, going into a 10 day drought, I think. So, you know, yeah. I, think, I think when you move into July and August, you do not cut the lawn. So you do not have to cut the lawn. This is mm -hmm. Irish you weather. You get away with 12, 14 days. Uh, lawn gets a little higher, stays a little green a little longer. Uh, ticks should not. I've uh, never sprayed for it. A tick on my property in the 16 years I've been here, I've never gotten a tick on my property. Oh, because I've gotten is, is what I'm out photographing Already. in the woods. <laughs> in the woods, photographing. And I, I've never been, and I'm on my knees constantly sure. on that property. Uh, me. So, never got a tick. Okay. So you don't. Have to you don't. I agree. So they say there's only two times a year that's really effective anyway, <clears throat> as far as it, you know, doing the tick. So, uh, yeah. I'm speaking of that. They would have you believe, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. Twice a year. Twice a week. Twice a week. Twice a week. <laughs> Here's the date. Uh, yeah. One of these things on you. Oh. I think at the deer and tick committee, you're going to live with that. Yep. So if you go into the wooded area after you come home, you got to do a yeah. body check. Yep. I, did anyone participate? Suzanne had sent out that information about the April 20th meeting where. It was the tick spray presentation, and uh, they were going to talk about field studies and what works and what doesn't work in terms oh, of- Oh, with the guy from the county, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I just wonder, it was a green option. It was at a green options meeting. Yes. So I just wondered if we could get a synthesis of what those studies actually were telling, because that's- I think might have it on the website. website. It's on the website. It's on the website. Okay. Or you can Using call. natural things as opposed to right. You know, right. pesticides. Would you or, assume that the Deer and Tick Committee have already synthesized that and have it out somewhere? We, we looked at that also, but Green Options is the one that really came up, you know, through it. But we did discuss it um, last week at uh, Deer and Tick. I guess what I'm just trying to get at is, does the general public know whatever those conclusions are? Because we've been talking about yeah. maybe this stuff doesn't work anyway. Right. We're just spraying the hell out of lawns, killing things, and not right. achieving anything. Right. So if, in fact, that's the case, it, it, um, do we put something out to the public on that? That's what I would like to yeah, be My daughter said that was a, a real good presentation the guy gave. You know, it's good. Okay. It's, it's, it's new research that he's doing. Right, so right. Cutting edge stuff. Yeah. So it's not. All right. Well, I'll try to find it and see if there's any sense. That'd be a great thing to put on 22, but I don't think it was filmed. But okay. It would have uh, been a good thing. To... It really would have been good, yeah. 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 You said the spray for ticks only in May and October. Right. That's what Oh, you said. is that what they, okay. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's, he's going after Lone Stars in May, he's going after Deer Ticks in October. Right. Okay. October. And, and, are there minutes from that? Because I think if you tell people just do it in May and October, people would say, nah, I just got here, I'm going to do it now. No, there's no minutes in the presentation, but it is on the website. Okay, it does explain why that is. Go back. Okay, fabulous. Okay. 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 Great. That's what we need. Take a look at that. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. And that gets right into mock with his pesticides. <laughs> well, and we just did we just kind of did that. I mean, last time I talked about right. this, and then yeah. Roxanne and I got together right. and we created this together. So, yeah. Great. so thanks. Yes. A cooperative. Good. Right. We got that. Two more. Uh, Jim, do you have anything more to say? On, uh, no, no. Okay, no. that's good. Uh, and I just wanted to mention the Green Expo coming up in August. That yes. Think about what we should have in our. Our table. I mean, I'm going to have the you know the special place for. Do we know the date on that yet? Yeah. It's August 20th. Okay. I think. Saturday. It's, 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 it would be the 20th. Okay. Right. And we have to have volunteers. Okay. I stop by for an hour. I should be here. So just relieve people. So it might be a little different this year because if the school is going ahead with their septics. Oh yeah. The IA system, and if they should they be working on the front lawn part? Uh, the arts and crafts would be relocated to some other place, either the this field or would go to the back portion of the tennis court area, but it would be it would be an alternate site. Hmm. Okay, so it would be flexible. I mean, we're normally, flexible anyway. Normally, you're right across the right. street from one. Right. Correct. Right. Right. So, All right. Okay. Yeah. Do, do we have any idea how the Green Expo is promoted? The reason why I'm asking is it was great, but I know everyone I spoke to was already very initiated. Uh, and it didn't seem as though they were already committed to 
uh, doing things environmentally. It didn't seem like there were very many people who were wandering through hoping to learn. I mean, I had great conversations, but the, I think the masses of people that we'd like to reach. Well, Tim Pertel is the guy that organizes it. Okay. My, my big thing is in the afternoon when it gets hot, on an August day, it gets hot. That's true. I mean, people just stop coming. They go, you want your graphs? Right. Have you ever done anything <laughs> from 10 to 12 o'clock? You, you're, you're done. Right. Yeah. 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 Everyone's at if the it's beach. a cloudy day, cool day, that's a different story. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with the Green Expo. Okay. But on a hot, sunny day, I, I personally, you know, if you could start earlier, and, you know, I don't know when he starts that up. I don't think he starts right at 10. But I would say that if you can start up at 9.30 to 10 and go to 1, because at 1 o'clock, it's everybody's going yeah. to meet you after that. Yeah, you're they're right. Not, they're not going. Well, it was yeah. different when they had the country fair and all that, you know. Right. So this, right. Is, this is like the only thing, and then that's it. It's the only thing, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And if time I see Tim Bertel, I, I need to. Would you? Because if it's such a wonderful Bertel. effort, but it needs more attendees. But you wanna, Tim wants to see our uh, report on the uh, invasives also, and he might have some good ideas for that. Because he's okay. always in the woods looking around. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's good that way. And that reminds me, we have to start thinking about checking our properties uh, and be careful of ticks. I think a good place to start is probably Shell Beach and uh, Wade's I Beach. I every part of Shell Beach with my wife. Spent two hours down there. Oh, on Sunday with the. Sunday. So it is spotless. <laughs> I'm going to go on record. Spotless. Roxanne, will you take Shell Beach and make sure that's <laughs> good? <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll, I'll find something. Walk, right. <laughs> by the way, when people go out there, they walk the road, they walk the beach. They don't walk the, the crack right. in between. I walk the How the piping flows. Walk me like, it was pretty good. Can we go back to the Sunday thing? The the Lions Club Fire Department Beach uh, cleanup street cleanup. Right. Um, it originally was scheduled for last week and it got rained out, right. so just a rain date. And I've done it. It's the third year. I actually didn't do it during COVID, um, but this was the most people that we had at this or they had at this event, yeah. and then people were lined up out to the road from the fire hall to get their gloves no, and their everything. their bags and everything. Okay. And uh, so the people on the island are really taking to it. Yeah. So it's a, a real great event. They ran out of gloves. They, they ran out of vests. Yeah, vests. Basically. Right. And the nice thing the Lions Club do, they, they give you a little thing before, and they give you a little something after. Right. Yeah. Barbecue. So right. Yeah. 12, right. 12 to 2 on a Sunday. Right. Normally it would be a Saturday. Yeah. But it was, right. it was well lit. But it really well shows night. people that came oh, yes. were all walks of life, from people in their 80s yeah. to there was strollers with yeah. kids in them. So people do care about our island and keeping yeah. it clean. So obviously it's a... And the fire department and the right. police department will golf out, yep. protecting the streets so people weren't speeding when people were right on the side of the road. It was well, well organized. It was well attended.